Let's go to Salvador in Calgary, Canada. Salvador, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Uh, good morning, sir. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to have me on. You bet. I'm so glad you called. What's up? Well, I'm a musician. I've been playing music all my life, and uh, last year was the second year that I was uh, able to make some, some money from that. I had about uh, 12 or so scattered gigs, which made me around 1,500 or so Canadian. All and, right, uh, all right, all right. Yeah, I'm I'm enjoying that, but... Uh, Obviously, it's not enough to live on. So, yeah. I'm. Uh, I've, my question is twofold. Uh, how should I uh, better promote my services, and then uh, also what uh, might be a good fit for a day job? Yeah. Are you? Uh, tell me about your music career. Is this instrumental? Are you singing? Are you with a band? Is a solo artist? What is it? Um, I'm a bass guitarist for hire. So, I have a few bands, and then there are a few. Uh, uh, singer-songwriter type guys that'll put on shows and they'll occasionally need uh, a backup. So I have business cards, I have a YouTube channel, and I, I try to hang around a lot of uh, uh, musicians doing what I want to do. But, Good. Uh, yeah, things... Uh, uh, well, let me ask I mean, you this. I had, I had busy seasons in the summer and then around Christmas, and then, I mean, it was already in the process of dropping off, and now with the corona suppression, well... Yeah. <laughs> right. No, I listen. And this is a temporary suppression, right? Um, yeah. We're just seeing some some really, uh, really, I think, optimistic trends. And uh, so I think people are craving live music and I think you're going to have a great, great, great opportunity. L just a quick context. Prior to last year, when you got the 12 scattered gigs, had you put yourself out there very much or were those gigs a, re a result of you saying, you know what, I'm really going to start hanging around other musicians and put myself out there? Uh, well, the problem was I wasn't uh, really of age <laughs> to be able to uh, play a lot of the of the drinking establishments. Oh, how old are you? Twenty. Oh my gosh. Okay, so the point is, you answered my question. You you weren't of age, so you weren't putting yourself in the situation. So, so my point is, I'm I want to congratulate you, and I want you to be really encouraged that you just got to the age where you can go play some of these gigs, and you've put yourself out there. And he had 12 gigs last year. I think the goal is, is can we double that or maybe triple it this next year once we get out of, you know, the COVID um, social distancing stuff and we get back to, you know, live shows. I think you're off and running. I'm super pumped for you. So here, let me Thank answer you, your question. Here's what you do. You keep doing what you're already doing because you are already using the proximity principle. You're doing a great job with it. In order to do what Salvador wants to do, he wants to be a, a, a professional bass player. He's got to be around people that are playing music and in places where music is being played, and you're doing it. You are actually living the proximity principle. All right, now listen. So keep doing what you've been doing. I want you now to start having more conversations about studio work. So there's, there's okay. playing live shows. But then there's also good money to be made if you can start making connections and playing studio stuff. So people that are recording albums and recording singles and all that kind of stuff. And if you become a studio musician, now you've got another stream of revenue. Make sense? Yes, it does. So that's how you become a full-time musician is you get paid to do studio sessions. You play with a full-time band or uh, you're, you're kind of helping out several bands. And right. you're just continuing to make connections. Now, your second question was, what's a good day job for that? And I would simply say that a good day job for you is something that takes care, that, that's something that you are at least good at and you don't hate. It doesn't have to be a right. sweet spot day job, okay? It just needs to be something that you're good at that doesn't take a lot of energy for you. It's just one of your natural talents and gifts. And you don't despise the work. Because it's right. always going to be just a day job. Your mind is always going to be on, oh, I got a gig tonight and I got a studio session tomorrow night and all that kind of stuff. So anything that allows you to work early mornings and maybe be done mid to late after, you know, mid to early afternoon, uh, excuse me, early afternoon to kind of mid afternoon so that you have plenty of time to get from there to these evening gigs for sound check. That's all I think you need to really get after right. it. I, I just there's a there's a caveat there. I've had um, I'm I feel like my my employability is a little bit limited because of uh, 
I, I have a visual impairment. I oh. don't have much okay. vision. Okay. So some of the some of the jobs that I've considered after uh, doing some research, uh, although kind of fit those criteria, you know, involved uh, more driving than I thought, for example, or mm -hmm. uh, would require uh, more training than I have. So do you have any, any sort of suggestions? Or Well, help me out, uh, because you know more about your condition than I do. So what are some things that you could do from home uh, in a remote situation that your, 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 the impairment of your vision would not prohibit you from doing these type of you know, t tasks? What can you tell me? What, what, how, can you use a computer? Uh, is that uh, a yes. real challenge? Uh, I have screen reading software. That's, uh, that's also part of how I, uh, I work with, uh, with music because a lot of it is uh, communication via email. And, uh, uh, yeah, I have my YouTube channel that I manage. Yeah, so I would be doing things that you could do from home. How do you get to work? Mm -hmm. How do you get to work? Do you do ride sharing? Do you ride an Uber? What do you do? Um, I, I don't work right now. Uh, I actually what have, have you done? Uh, when you need to go somewhere, how do you get there? Um, usually I'll, I'll, I'll have a ride. Um, okay. yeah. Yeah. Well, I have some, I have very supportive parents right now and there's other options. Uh, there's, uh, something called transit access in Canada. So great. So here's the thing. My point is I wanted to know if, if you were, if you needed to work in an office, how, you know, if you had that figured out and you do. So I think you're looking right. for a customer service type role where you can talk to people on the phone, you know what I mean? And you've got, you know, things of that nature where you can, uh, you can really thrive where your vision mm. is a non-issue, but just taking care of people, doing customer service, uh, maybe a call center type job, just something like that, that again, it's not taking a lot of your brain matter. Um, you know, it's not crazy difficult and it's your day job, you know, until you okay. can become a full-time musician. But I think you're looking for jobs that you can do remote or more in the customer service side of things where you're talking to people, you see what I'm saying? And, yeah. and your vision and the challenges with that really doesn't affect you. Okay. Yeah. Look, it's a day job. Right. <laughs> right? So what can you do? You know, it, it gets to this question, and we don't have to walk through it, but it just gets to what can you do in the workplace that you can do right now, and your, your vision impairment has nothing to do with it at all. It doesn't, it doesn't affect you. That's the stuff right. right there. So start looking for jobs that allow you to use the talent that you have uh, that, that, that won't be a challenge.